Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little interesting. I'm going to be doing my makeup while answering your questions. A lot of you asked me some very personal and business questions. So we picked out the best to make this video exciting. And I'm going to be doing my makeup like I've said before. And I'm very interested in using this palette right here. This is the NK Makeup Birthday Cake and it's so loud and colorful. <laughs> and I thought why not use it in today's video. The format is going to be a little different. Now uh, I have Varsha for my team right there and she's going to be um, asking me your questions while I do my makeup that way I can just like be immersed in the questions and the makeup as well rather than looking for questions and doing all of it together seems a lot all right guys so sit back relax and enjoy and let's jump right into the video okay guys I'm not gonna be telling you what products I'm using I'm just gonna have them listed down below Varsha take it away would you date Akhil if you met him today interesting we, we actually like discussed that it's very weird but so for all of you are new to my channel like Akhil and I met when we were like babies like bachas okay and I was in college and he was like a serial entrepreneur like he really wanted to build his life like he is right now but he's much more calmer but he was this guy who just wanted so much out of life he wanted to grow and our timings Whenever you meet someone that early in your like 19 to 20, 22, you're paving a path so important for yourself. It could be different directions, you know, they may want to go different paths and to hold on to each other is so difficult. Like 19 to 25 is very crucial in any relationship in my understanding because that dictates the foundation of how you're going to be moving on because you can't want the same things. It's very rare that a couple wants the same things, you know, career wise, personally. It was a big challenge back then but right now I feel like if I met him somewhere it's very possible <laughs> because firstly dude so handsome like I always was attracted to him ever since I saw him so like tall beard rustic like I loved how smart and intelligent he was and he just is a very smooth talker and he ask the right question like today he would ask better questions I think back in the day he would just hit on you I think right now he would just probably like pick up a conversation and talk about it he would talk about spirituality he would talk about business and that would sort of like peak my mind as well because I love people who can hold great conversations today it doesn't waste time I just don't like to waste time in small talk so I feel like if he engaged in those conversations it would like stimulate me and I'd be like maybe let's have dinner again <laughs> I think we would be like in a better place personally because I think he's understand he's understood the value of self love in the lockdown. He had no idea what self love was and I kept chattering on about it and he just saw and like understood what self love meant and he didn't have that. So I think he's a different person internally that he is today and that is much more attractive. <laughs> tell us about your girlfriends and how close you are to them. Oh wow, such a nice question. I love my girls. Like I love my girls on my team. I love my girls like outside my team. Like it's just such a freaking valuable relationship. Like I grew up having like friends, but I just like lately understood the importance of having like your girls around you, man. Because um, whenever I'm, I have like an internal battle or if I'm, fa it could be anything under the sun. I would just go to my girls. I'd just be like, look, I'm dealing with something. I need to talk. I need to. And Akhil is, is always like, dude, you you just tell your girls everything. How is that so comfortable for you? You know, and I'm just like, don't you speak to your boys? He's like, we just like hang. I'm like, it's so important. Even if you're a boy, girl, whoever, you need to have that like group of people who you're vulnerable to. I think it's so important to be vulnerable to a group of people that are just there to hear you out without judgment. And that's what my girls are for me. Like, with one phone call, like I would be there for them in a heartbeat and they would be there for me in a heartbeat. Dude, women, women tribes are like everything. I feel so passionate about women being able to do the best they can do. And for me to be able to help like young girls in whatever capacity I can for us to develop a bond, a relationship, a friendship while working together is just so special to me. Everything's awesome with girlfriends. So I feel like if you haven't found your girl tribe, I highly recommend that you find it somehow. What is luxury to you? That's deep. That could mean so many things, dude. It's gonna sound so cliche, but dude, can I tell you, like, I have been, and a lot of you already know this, but I have been at the epitome of luxury, wherein I've had, like, everything and I didn't even have to think about a single thing in my life. I've had multiple cars that were just, like, so, so, so high-end. I've had 
drivers and I've stayed in the best of the best like villas you know that penthouse the presidential suite I stayed there okay so I've had that amount of luxury in my life very early on and it's it was there for a good like I want to say seven eight ten years and then after that it's literally been like nothingness like nothingness so I've actually experienced both sides of lifestyles so I've had it all and I've had nothing at all and now everything in between so it's been a very very weird roller coaster that way in like today today if you ask me like i still have that girl in me because i grew up like my parents grew up really poor and then we became really rich and then really poor and then medium now right so um in my conscious mind like my teenage years have been fabulous so like i i have that bougie-ness in me i always want things to feel luxe and like um, I would love to travel business class over economy. That's just actually who I am because I've done that all my teenage life. But do I really need it now? Absolutely not. Like, am I gonna? Am I a spoiled brat when I don't get like a designer bag? No. I have one designer bag, and that too I got it like last two years. Me, a designer bag. So I'm not crazy about brands. I'm not crazy about all of those. I don't need to have those things to survive or to define who I am. Those are just like things that you have you know they're things that you have and they can leave you that they like they left me luxury was the the true feeling of luxury was felt when I remember this one time in my one bedroom apartment with my family <laughs> all of us staying like we no wait it was a one it was a no this was before the one BHK it was like we just transitioned out of the big house into like a smaller apartment and we didn't have a lot of like money and this was so, so weird. Like, it's a vivid memory and all of us remember this. My mom remembers it, my brothers remember it. And we received this massive ration, like ration or whatever, of like food. Like groceries came to our house from our church. Okay, we were just like blessed with like chicken and like, I was non-vegetarian back then. Chicken and like dal and rice and like, you know, ration. Like normal basic food stuff. And we opened it, we teared it open like a Christmas present. We were just like on it. And to think of, and that moment was like, shit. It was like an eye-opening moment for my mom. We're like, this is luxury, dude. Like having to eat like three meals. And I do get emotional, sorry. But it's okay. I always like remember those moments, but it's fine. So that was luxury for me, you know, and my family. So luxury can mean like anything to anybody today. And I never like judge people who have like expensive cars and like, they're defined by their lux. It's all right. Like, you know, you can't really point fingers at people because you don't know what they've been through and how they've got that luxury in life. So in all in all, just like be happy for people because luxury means different things to different people. So the fact that people are able to walk today is luxury. So for me, that moment was like, we have food. So yeah, I think today, if I don't have things, I'm okay. Now I'm so blessed because I have like everybody I wanted to, you know. A lot of my friends got cut out of my life when I dropped to like zero. They were all cut out. I had to let go of so many people who I thought were my lifeline and I had to cut them off my life. And having to do that has taught me so much. And then this life that I'm living right now is luxury to me. The people in my life are just like those people who will just grow up to like 100 with me. I feel like they'll just be there in my like funeral. <laughs> so I think relationships a luxury if you have good parents if you have just anyone to fall back on if you have best friends that's luxury to me today and i think if i've lost those people i don't think i'd be okay you know if i lost this money again i can come back again because i have been through that so um yeah just luxury is having access to basic and essential items in your house that's what luxury is to me. So the fact that I can eat like a meal, the fact that we can just like go down, take a walk, shit, dude, lux, lux, lux. How is your relationship with your in-laws? Nice question. I grew up with them. It's one of those things like, I met Akhil when I was so young. I was like 17. So I've met them that young and I'm 30. So you can imagine, they're literally like my parents. They hate it when I call them in-laws and all of that. Dude, they give me so much for it. They're like, I'm your mother-in-law? I'm your father-in-law? My gosh, my father-in-law gets mad only when I say, this is my father-in-law. Papa, who is 
पप्पा बोल सो लाइक आई कॉल इम लाइक पा डू दे आर लाइक द बेस्ट पीपल एव एंड ऑल ऑफ देम हैव माई गर्ल्स एंड एवरी वन हैज मेट दैम लाइक दे आर क्रेजी अबाउट माई गर्ल्स इज वेल बुलाना उनको डिनर पे बुलाना उनको लंच पे लाइक दी जस्ट वॉन्ट ऑफ फीड एंड लव एवरीबडी विच आई थिंक इज सो अमेजिंग आई थिंक माई फाउंडेस्ट मेमरी ऑफ दैम इज जस्ट लाइक दैम बींग absolutely open and welcoming i think that's the first thing you'll notice if you ever meet them that they are welcoming they're non judgmental they just want to embrace you and welcome you into their lives which i think is such a rare quality to have and it's not easy to have me as a daughter in law i'll tell you that because i <laughs> because i am very um opinionated i am like one of those modern bahu bolte hai na <laughs> because i i truly trouble them like i trouble him a lot for fun but like i am very non traditional in many ways i've always been that kind of a girl like i've not been the kind to like how to put this subtly to just like move in with my in law and they know this also move in with them or, and i i made sure that that was very i was very vocal about that because i would not be the kind of girl who would just like move in and there's nothing wrong with moving in let me let me get this straight and don't attack me for this there's nothing wrong it's very subjective and personal to each one and they are amazing people but my upbringing was very different it was like my mom moved out of their in-laws house they always believed in building a nuclear family and that's where i'm from i'm not from a family of dadis and dadas and like i don't know that life at all so for me to adjust into a new family like that was was um, hard and i made it very vocal and explicit that main nahi kar sakti and i would definitely move out with akhil when i get married with him and initially they had like they were like oh shit like i wish you were staying with us you know just sort of like love they just love and it was hard for them to digest but eventually they were like this is the best decision you could have taken moving out was blissful it strengthened our relationship to like no other like we became so strong like just having them apart makes me miss them more i want to see them on the weekend even more and that just was it's a very healthy way to deal and my relationship with them is just getting better and better as we grow they are very like open with emotions they like hug they're very like physical in their language they will hug you they'll embrace you and i'm not used to that i'm not used to physical hugging like from like elderly people we just like said hi or whatever was very casual but this was very new to me like hugging and just like talking about your feelings and hum nahi karte the ghar pe you know it's like so i've learned a lot from them or like a lot like um akis that is genuinely they've been like parents to me man it's like were like this tight so i'm so blessed because i can just talk to them like friends and not be like they're going to get offended i can just be like i don't want to do it like i talk to my like pa like that i'm just like i don't want to do it you go do it so he's just like oh my god you trouble me so much i've always wanted a daughter and <laughs> so your relationship with your mom is so strong how do i strengthen my relationship with my mother so mom and i have always been close growing up i think my mom keeps talking about this and she says that you know she's never had like the love of a mother herself and she like vowed like when she became a mother she's like i am always going to be there for my children because her mom never was and she made it a point to always always be there for us and i have noticed that like i don't remember a moment when my mother was not there for me like or for us never abandoned us never left us for a moment always there to like tutor us cook for us like literally like mothers are so amazing you know giving birth and like playing the role of a mother are two different things like it's just because you gave birth to someone doesn't mean they're going to be a fantastic mother because the job of a mother is so hard it's like being there for you taking care of you like nourishing you regulating you when you're not okay that is what a mother is and and she keeps talking to me about like i'm so glad like you were born in sp- she loves them but it's just like you know daughters in general she's just like i always wish i had a daughter and when i had you i was just like ecstatic because i wanted a daughter and a relationship between mother and daughters are just like another level and it's not for everybody i get that you have to remember and i keep rem- like trying to remind myself as well that your mother or your parents are just big giant children that's what they are 
they just like aged physically they grow old like all of us do but they are just children that are figuring out their lives as well there's no rule book or a manual book that's given to you that this is how you're supposed to get along with your children if you have a tough relationship with your mother i think it's mostly because of the baggage she's carrying it has to be like it has to be the baggage that she has brought into this relationship because she doesn't know where to put it or how to take care of it nobody ever asked her how she was doing nobody ever asked her if she went through anything painful and she just went on she got married she had kids whatever the relationship with the husband was or is mothers always keep stuff to themselves they'll never tell you what's wrong they'll never want to like disturb your peace they go through so much on their own that at some point it's going to like bubble up and they're not going to be their authentic self basically like conversations with mother like are you okay even asking that question is a lot for a mother because i'm sure she will tell you like she will eventually share it with you like she'll she just wants a portal because now i am that for my mother like whenever she calls me she's like i just want to talk to you can i just like please see you and for me that's huge because i feel like i'm also her partner in a way and she sort of lets everything out and that's that brings us closer like i literally don't hide conceal i never lie i'm very honest with my mother like um i think i've been brought up that way like we so we were like brought up in a very like christian household where we were like sin lying is a sin okay it was this thing and it's tagged in my bloody head my mother's just just done a great job with her values uh bringing us up at least i can speak for myself honesty and she's given me the gift of honesty dude and i can be ever so grateful for her because i feel like lying and just like hiding is so much of a baggage so the fact that i'm able to tell her about anything in my life tell her about akhil tell her about our challenges tell her about my girlfriends we did everything together for the first time you know and so that sort of like opened it out it opened avenues to hey you can do this but make sure you're doing it in front of me or just like tell me that you're doing it you know and that sort of gave me the comfort that hey i can just tell my mother and she's not going to judge me so today we have that relationship and it's very important to build a bond with your mother and remember that she is going through a lot of turmoil like even you may live in the most happiest family on the outside but internally mothers go through so much on the inside that they just need to let it out or they need some sort of a comfort for them to bring their true self forth and then you can have a fabulous relationship have conversations please talk to your mother like i think so many people just like grow up like being teenager and they just ignore their mother they're embarrassed by their mother but um unless she's fully healed on the inside with whatever she's going through it's going to be hard for her to show up for you as a parent and you can't blame her because again remember she comes from baggage and she definitely has pain and hurt if your relationship's not okay so instead of trying to blame her instead of trying to like tell her she's not a good mother try and have a conversation with her try and understand where she's coming from and where her pain is coming from and once you crack that lock open uh, after that is just like never ending love i've always wondered exactly how pr works and paid collaborations could you please tell us let me give you the difference first okay so there are uh, when you become like a credible influencer i'll say initially when i began i should just get a bunch of stuff uh sent to me they would ask me my address and they'd like send like a bunch of makeup just as gifts or like seasonally you know this is from mac this is from bobby brown and i was elated okay i should be so happy that these were gifts and i couldn't afford makeup so at that point it was amazing 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 it still is those are gifts that brands just send you in hopes of being like shown on your page okay you have a certain amount of followers and they just want to reach your followers that's how marketing works so they send you a gift without any like expectation you know they just send it to you and they're done if i happen to show that on on my page or whatever um, a lot of you get to know about it and you're like oh my god there's a new mascara in town there's a new blush in town and that is like non sponsored nothing is just a gift given to influencers and we get lots of it like i'll be very honest with you we get so much and in fact we had to stop brands from sending us stuff because it was getting to a point where i couldn't store it and it was just going to a waste you get a marketing budget okay this brand gets a certain marketing budget and they are supposed to allocate that to influencer marketing digital marketing whatever whatever they reach out to you and they're like look we're going to send you like this 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 is our new launch that's coming up for example this compact powder um it's in 30 shades and if you can just put up a story that would be great you can tag us 
if you post about it they would love it and they would probably send you another pr follow up later because they got some roi that is return on investment because when you post a story your followers will know and they would buy it right so that is their marketing way they're making money off of influencers by doing this now i'm in a place where i can say that you know i don't want to post i do want to post i can choose but initially when you're a micro influencer uh, posting it will help you it's beneficial because a uh, brand will start to trust you more and then you'll be able to like build your vanity if you don't if you can't afford makeup you can keep that as your stash okay so that's pr i get a bunch of pr as well i get so many like kya bolu main sab kuch lipstick decor. home deck yes not only beauty i get home decor i get food lots of food sent to my place in hopes that i would post how delicious their food was and then you would get to know all of this is marketing okay and then there is paid collaborations okay now paid collaboration is they're actually paying you commercial there's monetary exchange that's happening with the influencer and the brand for you to post about their brand so for example they say that look the super fan mascara is launching next um can you please post about it what are your commercials depending on your growth and where you're at you will send some rates okay for example 10000 rupees 20000 rupees for a post whatever it is so they will say okay fine this work for us we will pay you 10000 rupees for putting up one story of this mascara so then you will agree to that okay and then you will go ahead and on a certain date you will put that story up depending on what the brief is and once that post is up you get your 10000 rupees that is called paid collaborations okay initially i was very excited every micro influencer was very stoked to do paid like collaborations because money is coming free makeup the products sent to you are free by the way so yeah all of that you get really excited about that but then as i became like really well known and people started to trust me i had to drop a lot of brands on my side and i had to be very selective of which brands i choose to work with ha huh, there's barter there's one more barter this is when you're a very very micro influencer when you're just like 10000 or 5000 followers and they're interested in you they barter system bro they will give you this foundation and you give them a story or something like that and that's it okay so that is something you can do to build build your trust with the brand as well you do a free few free posts for them in product barter and that's how it works so i did all of these and right now i'm very selective of what brand i choose to work with and if i ever do a paid collaboration or a paid mention it's always going to be vetted by so now how we work now now that i'm i'm very like happy and grateful to be in a position where i can ask for this what we do is a brand approaches us and if it's a new product my team is like okay why don't you send the product to malika let her try it out for 2 weeks and then she'll get back to you whether she wants to use it or not so the product comes to me i give her a shot instantly i'll know okay shit this is a great product let's do it and then i will say okay fine let's go ahead with this collaboration depending on the brief again if it's a brief that's very outside my comfort zone it's very like different from who i am I don't do it. I change the brief because I can do it at this stage. But um, yeah, that's just how typically it works. I definitely try the product I'm recommending. I don't do new products anymore. I want to just shine light on why PR is not bad. And if we are paid to do certain things, um, it really depends on the kind of influencer you're following. Whoever you follow, make sure you trust them. That's all I'll say. A lot of influencers do a lot of paid collaborations, so you're very confused on what to trust them with. You're like, "Acha, iska bhi kar liya, iska bhi kar liya." You build a sort of trust with the influencer you're following, and this is our job. Like, this is my job. to review products to show products i've put in my time i've put in my energy i've put in so many so many hours of content creation to come up to this stage today that i've built such a loyal audience and when a brand comes and does like a paid collaboration with me it is my job and you should not do stuff for free once you're at a very good stage like this you know and they're paying for all those hours you put in 7 years coming they're paying for that not for that one moment just because you're popular they're paying because you've taken so much time to build this sort of an audience and that is worth it and people should get paid for their job for doing their job well how has it been co-founding um, basic beauty with veronica <gasps> What a question. So Veronica, a lot of you know Veronica already now. So she earlier was my brand manager. We were just talking about this the other day like how life has come through like so crazily. Yeah, so Veronica was like this little choti ladki. 
she just sent me a very well written email like i was at blue tokai with akhil and i was like akhil read this email and he's like maaz it's a very well written email you should call her up so i immediately picked up the phone i called her outside blue tokai in verso i still remember and i'm just like hi i was a child and i was also a child i had no idea what i was doing i didn't know how to lead someone into like doing back end for mujhe pata hi nahi tha ki i used to do my invoicing i used to print out my invoices i used to sign it sab main karti okay all on my own and it it came a point where i just could not do it anymore so she had to step in and i call her up she she is super driven she's like i can do this and la la so she came into my life as a brand manager she did that for i want to say like 2 years 2020 lockdown um akhil is like you should build a brand or whatever and i'm just like I was still talking. I was like, "Should we do this? Like, should I build a brand?" She's like, "Yeah, let's start. What would you do?" And we started getting to that conversation, not knowing like she was going to be a part of this brand so much. She was very well involved in the birth of this brand. A lot of people ask me, "Why are you co-founder, CEO, and not founder CEO um, on your LinkedIn and your profile?" And I keep telling people that because I did not find this on my own. It's I'm. It's not my own birth. This is literally co-founded by three people: me, Akhil, and Veronica. But Akhil has now taken a back seat because it's beauty, and he doesn't know much about it. So he developed the idea with us. But Veronica and I are only the co-founder. So that's why she's a co. founder i'm a co-founder so we literally birthed this brand together so to say founder would be a lie and she helped me a lot in the process of this brand from like its naming she gave it the name basic beauty if you all don't know uh it's malvika plus basics so she gave the name and we started developing the brand together and i was like girl you can't manage me and do basic beauty together cuz i have a lot of back end okay it's just very hard for someone to do both so i had to it was such a difficult call i remember her being there and i'm just like you're going to have to not be my manager anymore and i did not know how to do that i don't know i can't let this go shit is this for real and we were so emotional because we didn't know i was like what if mesic doesn't work out like what then like are you are we going to have the same relationship so we took a difficult call of transitioning her out of being my brand manager and fully into mesic beauty so for all of the brands still messaging veronica <laughs> She is no longer my brand manager. She is now fully my co-founder at Mesic Beauty, and they're two different brands. And then we met Varsha, who's sitting right in front of me, who is also the light of my life. She is just absolutely—I don't feel like I've missed out. Like I feel like it's just been this. It's just lit so seamless. And yeah, Varsha has taken over absolutely beautifully. And uh, building Mesic was amazing with her. I think it still is. Every every. a uh, doubt and every sort of like apprehension and battle that i go through i share it with veronica in terms of business personal because it's very important to have a co-founder that understands your personal life and your turmoils and your battles and is able to like help you out and uh, keep the boat afloat because if one of us falls it's going to be very hard to like balance it out so we keep each other in check and to make sure that hey this is the goal we need to remember to keep pushing forward and if either of us falls down it's very important for your co-founder to have that same strength to like lift you back up and i think she has that and she's super driven so yeah it's just been like friendship as well as co-founder as well like all of it together so it's been fun yeah are you possessive wife ah she's scared are you a possessive wife i am not <laughs> i am not both of us are like not possessive of each other at all because like i said initially maybe we were and i was like hyper insecure dude when i was a young girl um i was very possessive in the way that i couldn't control it but i was very insecure of who i was and that led that always leads to possessiveness when you're insecure in your own body in your own skin in your own relationship in your own self you tend to get possessive because you're afraid that someone else will be better and i used to have that when i was just super young because akhil was like leaps ahead of me in terms of knowledge in terms of just who he was and where he was heading uh but now no girl now i like we trust each other so much like it's so comfortable to be in the spot and it's so awesome to be in a spot where you don't have to like constantly keep a check and like 
be possessive and it's exhausting to be possessive it's exhausting to be always on your toes about who they're messaging who they're on phone with who they're going to meet like it's just so unnecessary and if you're in that kind of a relationship check yourself too like check the relationship you're in because it's just so not worth it if you don't have trust in the relationship it is my, you have to reevaluate either build the trust or just like don't be in it because mental peace is something i take very seriously if anything is causing my mental peace to go for a toss uh, it needs to be reevaluated like you need to have a conversation with them tell them why you are insecure tell them why that possessiveness is coming and if there's anything they can do to reduce that possessiveness in you that would help so your partner should really help you battle the possessiveness cuz sometimes it's coming from past relationships i can't imagine being in a possessive marriage bro like it's just so heavy like I can't imagine you being like insecure and possessive about Akin. Like that would be like the confidence is where the love is. Yeah, you really have to be confident in your relationship, and no matter where he is, what he's doing, you should be like so good. Like you know, being able to take like trips. Uh, separately and still being fine with it is very important dude like it's just a whole other tension aapko nahi lena bahut sari cheeze hain zindagi jeeni hai if one one little thing makes you like crack up cry create stories in your head it's just not worth it all right guys that's all i have for you thank you so much for watching i really hope i answered your question and i hope this was just like fun to watch um i will be back with another q and a very soon and i love you i will see you in my next video super soon Mwah. bye cheers